Hello and welcome to the One Lab 2021 Summer Studios Info Session. Thank you for taking the time today to zoom in from all over to learn about our program, meet faculty and TAs, and understand why One Lab is such a unique program. I'm Vivian Kwan, Executive Director of Terraform One, and I'll be your host for this event. Just a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, during the presentation, your mics and videos are turned off, but we highly encourage you, if you have questions along the way, you can enter your questions in the Q&A box below. Um, and we will, and someone will be either writing a reply to you, or we may be collecting some questions uh, and addressing them later in the Q&A section at the end of the presentation. Uh, so we'll hear from these speakers today. Lova, chair of One Lab, Terraform One co-founder, an architect, educator, an inventor holding 18 patents. Maria is the former academic director of the Education Institution CIEE, former leader for Arab University in the Americas. Her background um, in architecture and design is from Harvard, getting her PhD in education. She's awarded Women, Women of the Decade in Science and Design Leadership at the Women Economic Forum in 2020. Julie Bleha, an educator and program administrator, is a native New Yorker with Montana roots, where her fascination with green design was sparked by the sod roof house on her family's homestead. In her former role as assistant editor, direct, uh, Julie helped launch the pre-college program at the School for the New York Times, helping to design and run everything from curriculum development hiring teachers and industry leaders, and proudly starting the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative there. <clears throat> Dr. Nina Anker, faculty in architecture and the environment, founder of NEA Studio, award-winning architect, educator, furniture and lighting designer, specializing in sustainability. Nina is currently teaching at the Parsons Interior Design Program. Dr. Mitchell Joachim, Faculty for Biodesign and Engineering, Associate Professor at NYU, co-founder of Terraform One. Mitch is globally recognized in ecological design and urbanism, chosen by Wired Magazine for the Smart List and selected by Rolling Stone for 100 People Who Are Changing America. Uh, and Amelia Mann, our sustainable fashion a uh, teaching assistant and dual degree candidate from Brown and RISD. So here's our agenda. Um, okay, sorry, this is, uh, sorry about the, uh, the timing. This is essentially, we will first start with introductions and then um, Maria Aolova will give the presentation and, and explanation and description of the One Lab Summer Studio program. And then there'll be faculty presentations and TA presentations from Nina, Mitch, and Amelia uh, before we have a live demo of our studio in a box. Um, and then we'll hear what you've all been really waiting for, the details uh, of the program and all the logistics to the application uh, from our director, Julie Bleha. Finally, the last half hour will be our live Q&A. So I wanna give you a little background on Terraform One, which is a not-for-profit 501c3 architecture and urban design think tank that's dedicated to improving the environment through design, research, public art, and education programs such as the One Lab. If there's one way to invest in the future of the planet, it's through educating the next generation of environmental and design leaders. We endeavor to combat the extinction of planetary species through pioneering acts of design. Our mission, Design Against Extinction, 
includes not just species, but humans as well. Our work aims to illuminate the environmental possibilities of habitat cities and landscapes across the globe. Next. Uh, and here's our studio space where one lab takes its inspiration. We're based in the Design and Technology Center of the Brooklyn Navy Yard, a collective space we helped to create called New Lab, buzzing with makers, inventors, engineers, and socially minded entrepreneurs. And finally, here's a recent project for the TED Global Countdown, combining research, biodesign, and fabrication. This project called the Anti-Extinction Library won the TED competition to create a unique solution to the climate crisis. This giant egg-like structure was fabricated as, as a public installation piece, and it was conceived to hold and preserve samples of DNA of species that have gone extinct with the hope of one day being able to, to resurrect them. So on that note, I'm gonna turn this over to Maria, thanks. Good evening, and thank you for attending our info session. I will start by telling you a little bit about the history of OneLab before I go and describe OneLab Summer Studio 2021. So we began as this extraordinary think and do tank of architects, engineers, artists, biologists, and all these different professionals who came together to seek alternatives to traditional forms of both teaching and professional practice. And in order to do that, we decided to start a new profession. Urbaneers are multidisciplinary professionals whose job is to regenerate, pioneer, and sustain the future of urban Rome. We often get asked, who is your perfect urbaneer? And we tell this story imagine if you combine the keen sense of community of Jane Jacobs. She was an e ecologist, economist, and a community builder with like the brute force of achievement of Robert Moses, who was a, a planner, a visionary, and a very savvy politician. You'll get somebody like Frederick Law Olmsted, who was a landscape architect and the designer of Central Park in New York, among many others. The urban profession, however, is not reserved just for architects, designers, planners, but firemen and artists and chefs and biologists, they're all part of creating the future of the urban realm. So we started in 2009 with a summer program for college students and people came from around the world to experiment with us, learning the principles of synthetic biology, building full scale uh, prototypes of designs and working with living materials. Here, the students are pleaching living tree together. And once the, the tree is fused, it creates a, a, a living wall that can withstand lateral forces. We also did a lot of experiments with uh, green roof technology. Here, Walter Meyer is teaching the students how to design this green roof unit that has the ability to filter gray water using wetland grasses in this case. So I wanna define for you biodesign as a field of design that incorporates living organism as an essential component, enhancing the function of the finished work. So this is not biomimicry. We are not mimicking nature. We are working with nature. And that leads me to One Lab Summer Studio 2021. So we created this studio to help you discover the future of design and technology, sharpen your problem solving skills and help you propel both your academic career and get you ready for college. 
So this is a two week summer program and it consists of lectures, virtual tours and design studio. You'll be taught online by award-winning faculty of innovators, scientists, designers, artists uh, that were all carefully selected by Terraform One. And just to give you a sense of uh, our faculty community, we have entrepreneurs like Andrew Shear, who uh, co-founded Farm Shelf to fashion designer and scientist Andrea Lohrer, who is a professor at, at Princeton University to a award-winning astrophysicist John Levin. All these people will come to you in the beginning of every day. And it's an unprecedented chance to have a conversation with them. We've asked them not just to give you a typical lecture, but to tell you their life story, to tell you the steps and the choices they've made to get where they are. So we offer three different courses this summer. In the architecture and the environment course, you will learn about how we can change the built environment that today contributes 40% of all the greenhouse gas emission. And we need to bring that to zero. And we can do that today using new materials and technology. In the biodesign and engineering course, you learn how to grow materials instead of manufacturing them. And in the sustainable fashion and materials, you learn how the fashion industry is changing to also produce materials in an environmentally responsible way, but also change the social and labor practices of producing cloth. But most importantly, you'll join the call for climate activism. Climate education is most powerful when it makes you passionate. And that's our goal for this summer. Uh, this is this amazing young woman that I recently met uh, virtually. Her name is Alexandria Villasenor, and she is one of the leaders here in the U US of the youth fashion movement. And uh, we hope for her to join us uh, several times over the course of the summer and uh, meet with you. So I just want to uh, briefly walk you through what a typical day is going to look like at one level. You'll start in the morning with a lecture and discussion. And again, you'll have a chance to engage uh, and, and ask questions. And then we'll leave a time in the end where you have a time on your own to reflect of what you just learned. The virtual tours are a really important part of the day because you'll take you to places where you cannot actually go. I mean, imagine going to a designer studio or bio laboratory or factory. Uh, you have this unprecedented chance to have access and uh, ask questions and see how all these uh, materials are being produced and how research is being uh, made. In the afternoon, you'll have a chance to work on your own design project and you'll step away from the screen and work with the materials that are provided to you to produce your own design. And here it's just an example of a, what a typical day may look like in a sustainable fashion and material course. We'll start, let's say, this day with a lecture by Dr. Amanda Parks, uh, who is a fashion scientist, and she currently serves as the chief innovation officer of Fangaya, a material science brand. You'll learn about t-shirts that are made out of seaweeds rather than cotton, puff jackets filled with wildflowers rather than down, and sneakers made out of grape leather rather than animal leather. You also learn about the clean water practices that Pangaea is using to produce their dyes and their fabrics. Then virtually visit their studio and laboratory in London and, and witness how these materials are being researched and the experiments that they're doing. And then from there, go to Portugal to see their factory where these new type of fabrics are being manufactured. And then in the afternoon, we'll be working on your project that will come to you in a studio in a box. 
And I want to steal Emilia's thunder. She'll do the unboxing a little bit later. But basically, every student will get a set of materials to uh, be able to produce the designs uh, in, a, in a studio course. And everyone will also receive a copy of our recent book, Design with Life. And we'll use the book as a, as a basically a guide for all these new materials, new technologies that will be your textbook that you can refer to and, and, and help you with your designs. And uh, I have here a few examples of the type of studio projects you'll be producing. And the goal is to create a design portfolio based on the knowledge that you've gained and then present the work at, uh, on the last day of the class. So here in the architecture in the environment course, you'll be learning how to sketch and then how to produce simple 3D models uh, using um, available software such as SketchUp, and then being able to manipulate that in order to produce a final portfolio piece. In a biomaterial course, you'll be working with mycelium and, and learning about the process of how to grow certain shapes and then and, 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 and what are the different components in this process. And then in the sustainable fashion course, again, you'll be learning of uh, this new type of biomaterials and also how to create your own design and, and produce a portfolio piece. But we will also send you outside. You don't have to sit in front of a screen for two hours in the afternoon. We'd like you to go out sketching, maybe painting, and kind of learning how to produce and record your ideas in your sketchbook. And with that, I'll turn it to Dr. Nina Anker, who is going to talk about the sustainable fashion, I'm sorry, the architecture and the environment course. Thank you so much, Maria. So I will share my screen, if that's okay. Um, Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm going to be introducing myself. I'm Dr. Nina Edwards Anker, and I will be teaching environmental design and architecture. I share the space uh, at the new lab with Terraform One. We've been long time collaborators. And um, I We'll be presenting a project to represent some of the concepts that we will be discussing in class, uh, learning about environmental architecture and the basic principles um, of environmental uh, architecture, which is stamped by certifications such as LEED or Passive House. Um, this house uh, won the AIA Long Island um, Prize for Sustainable um, architecture, and it's based on passive house principles, um, such as having, a, this is the northern wall, which is very opaque. And then you can see through the window, the southern wall, which is facing the sun, gathering solar energy for passive solar heating and gain. And here's the sketch um, where the back opaque curved wall collects the thermal mass um, gathered from the sun coming in through the south. So these are the kinds of principles that um, the students will be learning where for example, uh, rainwater collection comes into place as well as um, solar energy. And uh, they will learn, for example, the basic components of a uh, weather diagram where they will learn to indicate three elements, the north sign, the sun path, and the prevailing breeze. Um, they will learn to look at site maps where uh, they will have to understand elements like the wetland zone and how to respect that when you put in your building footprint. Um, and also to understand how um, a palette of materials um, that is uh, respecting the cultural history of the neighborhood, for example, the cedar shingles in Long Island and the native beach grass 
uh, which is required for lead to have um, both native planting and also permeable um, gravel driveway, all elements of lead landscaping. They'll also appreciate elements, uh, natural elements coming through the house, such as the experience of sunlight and how that can um, contribute to daylighting principles and well being for visual comfort and thermal comfort. Um, and then they'll appreciate, uh, you know, these principles of rainwater collection, for example, in association with uh, classic architectural tools that have been used uh, by architects like Richard Neutra throughout the times of uh, reflecting pools, becoming like a mirror on a horizontal surface that bounces the light off of the vertical um, image that's reflected in the sliding doors so that the boundary between inside and outside becomes blurred and um, and underlines the the um, the underlying notion for environmental design to connect us with nature, um, as well as understand the palette of materials that's required for LEED certification. Um, so this marble, for example, comes from Vermont, where all the materials are derived from uh, less than 500 miles away, and also um, materials that are healthy for the lungs, such as these pre-laminated, uh, prefabricated laminated timber. Um, trusses, which uh, as opposed to materials like concrete, uh, do not release toxins into the environment um, or into the air for uh, human lung health. Um, and they'll also learn that different um, ways of building adapt to different climates. So for example, a passive house built in New York will look very, very different from an eco structure in uh, Cambodia, which is your a tropical climate where you have the monsoon um, and your, your building uh, takes um, in air, but protects from rain. And again, we have a rainwater collecting system. Um, and then they will also appreciate working with their hands since we've all had a year of being in front of a screen, uh, I, the, the students will be ready um, for, for tactile um, work and, and sketching with their hands as opposed to on a screen, hopefully. Uh, we'll also look at uh, park projects um, in, in public art installations. This one called the Big Dipper using um, solar energy where the, the stars of the Big Dipper um, are made out of photovoltaic modules that light up automatically at dusk. This is the North Star. Um, and then they'll have the opportunity also to make their own solar lamps, um, which is something that here's an example of a, of a design where the, the panel is um, is printed out digitally according to uh, latitude, where the uh, the southern climate has the panel uh, facing more horizontal because the sun is higher up in the sky, and then gradually goes more horizontal up to uh, the northern latitude. So understanding uh, the concept of, of how photovoltaic panels work in relation to the sun in different climates, um, but also just understanding uh, the basic module of uh, the photovoltaic material and the panel. Um, so they will, they will be given kits, solar kits, where they can uh, understand and, and demystify this technology for themselves by actually designing their own solar lights. Um, and they can explore uh, different organic materials or biomaterials and, and hopefully fabricating with their hands. So that's, that's it for my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Nina. Um, it's uh, always amazing to see your work and um, hear you talk about um, how you create these projects. And uh, next, uh, we have uh, Dr. Mitchell Joachim, and he's going to talk to us uh, um, about biomaterial. Uh, great presentation, Nina. Thanks, Maria. Uh, yeah. So we are going to learn a lot about biomaterials and thinking about socio-ecological design at One Lab this summer. So uh, some of the things we'll be concentrating on will be mycelium, which is the root base of uh, mushrooms. In this case, we'll be working with reishi. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we're going to take a look at uh, how that can actually transform design. So here it makes these very complex dendritic structures that are just sort of woven and uh, create this kind of natural lattice that allows us to use this material for all kinds of exciting things, 
acoustical tiling is one thing, furniture is another. Uh, you can even make teddy bears out of the material. Next slide. So what we do is we're going to learn how to take uh, the mycelium, put it in a Petri dish with a, a particular food source or alluvium. Here we're going to acculturate uh, agricultural waste. So we're going to take something like cotton husks or wood chips. We're going to put the mycelium inside it. We're going to watch it devour those wood chips over the course of seven to eight days and then eventually form this a felt like uh, slightly rigid material that could be shaped into almost any geometry. Next slide. So we're going to look at uh, also combining it with things like acetobacter, which is uh, a bacteria express cellulose. You can do that at home with kombucha tea in your bathtub and you create this wonderful leather like material that can fuse to the mushroom material and actually create a novel biopolymer at home. You can see us doing that here. The thumbtacks are great to show you the kind of the scale of this material. The two of these things fold into one another and you can get something that tends to have hydrophobic properties. Next slide. So what are we gonna make with it? Well, uh, one of the things that we did is we actually made chairs, chairs that you could grow in a lab uh, or grow in your kitchen. And these are chairs that you can eat. So we make a series of molds and different patterns. We shape the chair into almost anything you would like. The molds then kind of uh, puzzle fit and interlock together and they make a chair. And the next slide is the a, example of uh, a chair that you could uh, actually incorporate using these, these lofts or curve systems from templates made out of plyboo. And here, these are much larger chairs uh, and, and also from agricultural waste. And these are more of the adult size versions while the previous ones would be uh, a, kid's, a kid's chair. Next slide. So here, a similar process. We'll take a, a plyboo material. We'll laser cut them into a, a shape. We'll fashion them into a concise triply curved geometry. Next slide. We'll then add in the uh, waste material and the mycelium allow it to grow for seven to eight days. We'll apply heat at around 140 degrees. It petrifies and the bamboo and the mushroom fuse together to make these beautiful triply curved geometric chair forms. Hi everyone. So this is our monarch sanctuary where here you see the life cycle of the monarch butterfly as it transforms uh, through the stages of its life cycle. Oh, uh, you got you. So thanks, Vivian. I don't know what happened to the uh, the internet, but uh, we're looking at the monarch sanctuary, and that's the life cycle image from chrysilli and eggs to caterpillar eating the milkweed. Next slide. Uh, here is kind of a section through the building showing the, the algae based windows, the planting systems that are vertically located, and then the butterflies themselves teeming with life in the interstitial space. Next slide. And here is the uh, an axonometric drawing of the entire system. Those glowing sacs are actually uh, feeder ports for the butterflies. It's essentially electrolytic fluid. They love to eat. Gatorade is something that's actually commonly used to feed butterflies. This entire area shows how the building and the fenestration system, the floor slabs, all relate to this biotope mosaic that's designed for the life cycle of butterflies. Next slide. Here's the one we actually installed at the Smithsonian, the Cooper Hewitt. This is a four ton experimental building facade that's got an exterior diagrid system that is essentially the outside of the building. Then next, uh, next slide is the interior, which is this kind of vertical uh, uh, landscape that is intended to increase biodiversity in cities. All the different planting systems and the concrete here is designed for not only to be fireproof and structural, but for the life of butterflies. So there's areas for them to rest and sleep, to propagate, to uh, do, um, they have mud baths and nectar feeding ports. All of this is to keep the monarch butterfly from going extinct. So we've lost 90 million of these creatures. They're native to New York, we've got to stop it. So here's uh, the last slide that we can end on, which is the monarchs inside their sanctuary facade system. When you look out the windows of this building, 
you see this beautiful uh, vertical garden. Anyway, that's some of the things we'll be talking about at One Lab this summer. We're super excited to have you guys. And uh, I think that's, that's it for this particular session. Thanks. Thanks, Mitch. I'm glad the internet recovered. And uh, next we have Emilia Mann and she'll tell us a little bit about her work and then do the unboxing of the Studio in a Box. Yeah. Um, so hi, yeah, again, I'm Amelia Mann and I'm going to be the teaching assistant for the Sustainable Fashion and Materials course. I'm currently a senior studying material engineering at Brown University and apparel design at the Rhode Island School of Design. And my work really exists at the intersection of biology, technology, and the garment industry. So the reason I'm interested in this intersection is because the garment industry has a huge issue in regards to sustainability um, from the labor and land and petroleum pollution that's produced during the kind of construction of textiles and the making of fibers um, from the water pollution that happens from dye and finishing in addition to the water consumption and from the landfill waste that's created um, at almost every step from the manufacturing to the end use of the garment. There's basically at every single level a problem. But I believe really strongly that through biology and technology, we can create ways to not only recycle and reclaim already existing materials, but also create new, more sustainable materials and methods of creating. I think biology and technology also pushes us to ask how these textiles could be performing on a higher level than they already are. How can they better interact with our bodies and the environments around us? So now I'm going to like very briefly kind of go through some of my most recent projects. So I was most recently at the uh, NASA Soft Goods Lab. Um, one of the projects I worked on there was the microgravity sock. Um, so the, basically the main challenge here was that, you know, when you're in space, you often use your feet kind of like your hands. And as a result, they get rubbed raw from being like hooked under things to stabilize yourself. Um, you also lose all the calluses off the bottom of your feet um, because gravity is not acting on your foot in the same way. And there's also just a host of other challenges that go into designing clothes for space from how they are cleaned to um, how they are stored. So I worked really closely with the astronaut Don Pettit um, to kind of make sure I was hitting all the main concerns the astronauts had. I just included this fun image because he was actually a great lover of design himself. Um, and this is a microgravity coffee cup that he designed. So the solution I presented um, utilized 3D knitting in strategic locations um, to solve the different problems. So like at the top of the foot, I kind of, I developed a 3D um, knit like cushioning that would um, protect the foot from impact. I also utilize tighter and looser knits in specific areas to create stability and also optimize airflow. And then at the heel, I created like a ribbed texture so that when you took off the sock, um, it would scrape the dead skin into the foot, like into the sock instead of releasing it out into the microgravity environment. I also worked on a collection of garments for the next mission to the moon, which is the Artemis mission. Um, and basically the main prompt here was to update from the Apollo wear, which was basically a cotton jumpsuit and a, a Teflon jacket and pants that they wore for seven days straight. Um, but the Artemis mission is almost three times as long as the Apollo missions and has a host of other problems. So they really needed an update. Um, this garment had a lot of different design components and I'm just gonna highlight a few of my favorite ones to you. Um, so something that really interested me is that when you're designing on earth, you know, you think about usually for clothes in particular, you kind of think about the standing position. Um, but the position that's actually most frequently adopted in space is what's called the neutral body posture, which is like midway between standing and sitting. So I really wanted to design a gar garment that would be comfortable for this body position. And to do that, I really looked towards wheelchair design um, for pants. Uh, to kind of see how what features were incorporated to make things comfortable for long term sitting. I also utilized 3D knitting again to kind of create padding in um, what's called like pinch point areas, which is basically where the astronauts bodies hit the environment around them because they're floating instead of stationary. Uh, and I also designed a tool belt for them um, 
so that is, they had a really easy and efficient way of storing their tools and preventing them from floating around them. Um, and then also some, a way to like really quickly and in an organized way, remove their tools and put them away in case of an emergency. And here is just the final lineup. And I also wanted to highlight some of my work with biomaterials. So this is a bacteriocellulose phase I made. And what I was trying to demonstrate here is that how when um, bacteriocellulose is wet, you can like mold it and then just dry it into whatever form you want. And I'm super looking forward to um, being a part of this course. You know, when I was applying to college, I didn't really have a very strong understanding of the fact that art, science, and technology could always really exist together in this field, this burgeoning field. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to introduce that to you guys um, earlier as like a thing that exists for you. Uh, and I'm also really looking forward to working on the projects. Um, I know a lot of high schools don't necessarily have the capabilities of um, kind of, you know, constructing interdisciplinary projects. So I think this is a really unique opportunity. Um, and I'm really just looking forward to helping out with it. And now I'm going to stop sharing and demonstrate for you the studio in a box. There. Um, so yeah, right here I have our current prototype of the studio in the box. Uh, this one is for the uh, sustainable fashion and materials course. And so this is what it would look like on the outside, what you would get in the mail. All right. So um, the fashion and sustainability course is composed of two projects. Uh, the first is the creation of a material library of biomaterials. We will show you how to make biomaterials using everyday household organic byproducts such as banana peels, a few specialized ingredients we will send you such as glycerin and um, some plastic molds. Some examples of what this biomaterial could like potentially look like um, could be an oat paste biomaterial or you could do a coffee ground based biomaterial. And the purpose of this project is uh, twofold. One, to get you familiar with how biomaterials are made and the science behind that. And then two, to give you a resource to use for not only your own future projects, but for maybe workshops you might want to run for your peers. The second project is a sewing project. So we will send you some pre-made biomaterials and a few basic sewing tools. Um, and this project could be a wallet or it could be a phone case or you know something else of your own design. We will walk, work, walk you through the steps of patterning, drafting, and sewing, um, all via live video demonstrations and written instructions. We will also demonstrate some of um, the latest 3D modeling and manufacturing software in the garment industry. And the purpose of this project is to get you familiar not only with making, but making with biomaterials. And then as was mentioned earlier, throughout the duration of the course, you will also be attending daily guest lectures and virtual studio visits. So we will provide you with a notebook for you to take notes on these activities and um, the conversations we host around them. So here's just an example of what that might look like. This sketchbook will also be a great place for you to draw out any ideas you have for your project. That. And then last but not least, you'll be provided a copy of Terraform One's Design with Life. Um, and this book will serve as inspiration throughout the duration of the course and beyond. So this concludes the demonstration of the studio in a box. Thank you, Emilia. This was uh, fascinating. And then now I'm going to invite Julie uh, to walk us through the program detail. Thank you, Maria. Um, I just want to, uh, let me just, uh, we'll take you through the basics of what Maria had talked about and starting with the course days, dates, and times. So as uh, we talked about before, it's a two-week class. We 
offer four sessions throughout June, July, and August. And of course, students may enroll in more than one session. That is to say, all three classes are offered, all four sessions. So if you wanna take two classes, you are welcome to come back. The average class size, we're um, looking at about 12 students. We could go up to 15, but 10 to 12 is probably where it will be at. Um, and that lets you have a much more personalized experience with the instructor. All courses meet Monday through Thursday from 11.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's Eastern time with a lunch break for an hour in between. So if you are central or mountain time, you are in, you don't have to get up at the crack of dawn to join us. And there are the dates for our sessions. Um, and you'll note there is a week gap for the July 4th weekend. Here is a calendar that's a visual representation of what the day looks like. The two things I really wanna point out here are the tech check on Monday, half an hour before the regular class starts. And that's so that we can just check that everybody's on the same page, they're hooked up, uh, their connections are good, their computers are working. And that way we are ready to roll after that. And then as you can see, there's an orientation. And then the other thing I wanna point out, so it's Monday through Thursday, Monday through Thursday is on that final Thursday. In fact, the whole day is given over to the studio work. And uh, we, um, sorry. And then we have, uh, so Thursday morning is given over to the studio work. And then Thursday afternoon is the presentation of all that amazing works. For instance, what Amelia was just talking about uh, in the sustainable fashion class. So I wanna talk a little bit about eligibility and applying. So we have a program that's open to students who are rising 10th to 12th graders, that is entering 10th to 12th grade, as well as graduating seniors. We'd love to have them uh, on as they transition from high school to college. And all of that um, is uh, meant to accommodate students who have an interest and are ready to apply these skills. The application is an online uh, on our website at onelab.org. Uh, and what we ask you to do is you select the session that you want and then the course preference. And we're asking you to list two or three uh, backup choices in case your first choice is filled. You'll answer some short essay questions and then that's the time to apply for financial aid if you want to. Okay, so now we have uh, explanation of tuition and pricing. So we have uh, the each session is each course is $1,600 plus a $50 material fee and that will cover what you saw in the studio in a box. And then there's also $50 non-refundable application fee. As I said before, you can enroll in multiple terms. If you do, you actually get a 10% discount for each course. If you register with a sibling or refer a friend, you can get a 10% discount. And then the best offer, the one that we're very excited about is the early bird registration, which is apply by March 31 and uh, pay in full by April 15th. Not only do you get the 10% tuition discount, you also get two complimentary one hour portfolio review sessions, one-to-one -one with Terraform, uh, uh, associates, uh, some of our faculty, and that's a value of $200. And that would be scheduled after the course is over. You can book it any time in the summer or even early fall. I should note only one type of discount per student. And then we have, uh, again, a little drilling down on the daily activities. Maria covered a lot of this. Each day, again, will be centered around a daily special guest who will lecture. Um, you have the tours and then the outdoor work. Again, it's a time for students not only to get outside and away from the screen, but to work independently and to use their imagination as a resource as they use the surrounding landscape structures and people for inspiration. Um, the thing I really wanna stress about these uh, daily activities is here on the second card, as the students are using materials delivered in the custom studio in a box, as they're working on their hands-on studio project, as they're communicating perhaps with the special lecturers, they are actually gonna be every single day in class with a main instructor and a TA, someone like Amelia. And that person will be the one who's offering help and guiding the students to understand the connection between all the different lectures they will have seen or the tours they will have participated in or the work they're doing. That's the person 
who is helping them see, uh, uh, they're like the glue, it's helping the students see the spine or the, the narrative. And, and that is not only to make sense of what they're experiencing and learning, but also to sort of set the stage for what further inquiry they might have as they move on out of the program. Okay, so next I wanna talk a little bit about financial aid. So in an effort to have a more diverse and inclusive student body, we are offering a limited amount of need-based tuition remission awards. This is separate from the discounts I discussed earlier. So the financial aid uh, request is done at the same time as you apply for the course. It's, uh, you write a brief essay called the Statement of Need, and then you know the amount you're requesting, 10 to 25, well, anything up to 25%, along with supporting documentation. We cannot promise that you would get what you request, but we would try and work with each family. Um, so again, to remind you, the majority of the words are, awards are just for that partial tuition remission, but we will have a small number of seats reserved for full scholarships. And that award amount would be confirmed when the student is notified of acceptance to the program. And finally, I want to just again, review why one lab, what makes a special, Vivian touched on it at the start. You heard from some of our lecturers, how interesting and exciting and innovative this, this uh, subject, these subject matters are. So again, if you're registering early, you get two one-on-one -on -one portfolio review sessions, and you also get a student evaluation, which means that you can use the evaluation design portfolio as part of your college application supporting materials. Um, learning how to imaginatively conceptualize projects and then move on to practical ex execution is a skill much prized in diverse career and job pathways. And it's certainly something that you'll be doing with us. And then also digging deep into the process of design innovation, where you learn to connect concepts and practices that aren't immediately obvious. You suggest prototypes and then you iterate and reiterate design until desired outcomes are achieved. And this kind of thinking has become more and more popular as a way of um, uh, engaging with the world in any number of uh, academic path or career paths. So you can help lead the charge against climate, climate extinction and make a positive impact on the world now. So please join us at One Lab Summer Studio 2021. Again, please feel free to visit us at onelab.org. And I should add that you can also book a session, a one-on-one -on -one session with uh, one of us if you wanna hear more about the program.